We got Marty Costello, offensive line coach uh, for Winnipeg. Thank Marty you, Wilds. This year, and they uh, they won the Grey Cup. So we'll jump right into it. Marty, go ahead. All right, you boys see my screen, Sharby? Yeah. All right, appreciate you guys having me on, Sharby, for organize this. Although I'm I'm kind of pissed right now. I feel like the dumb schmuck who's got to follow Nick Saban at the University of Alabama. I'm, I'm not really sure how to follow up Wiles right there. So, uh, yeah, you, you guys know how I felt now in 2017 after being his assistant for the year, having to take over for him. And uh, I had to learn on my own and, and find my own way a little bit. And I'll, I'll show you a few clips of there. There's, there's going to be a couple things. I know it may sound sacrilegious, but there's going to be a couple things that I, I don't do the same as, as Wiles uh, did. And uh, that's, that's part of my, my talk tonight, too. So let's get going here. I got a bunch of stuff to cover. Paul, you can cut me off when you think I've uh, done enough. So, um, but first, I want to talk about this. It's something I really believe in. Uh, and, and that the old linemen are the real skilled players of an offense. And, and I try to approach it that way and make sure the guys understand how important I think they are and how unnatural uh, what, what we do is. And, and that, to me, is the, the skill is a learned trait. And uh, that, that, that is an offensive lineman to a T. Uh, I, I thought a lot about this. It's the only position in all of sports that have a ball or a puck or an object that, that offensive linemen play the game. Uh, the majority of the game not knowing where that ball is, and that's something that's unique, okay? Um, you know, coaching the old line, it's not just drill work. You know, Wiles kind of touched on that. Young coaches, we try to make them all look the same, but uh, every guy is built differently. Every every guy handles coaching differently. Um, every guy's body is a little bit different. So as, as you get going, you got to learn how to adjust with each guy. All right, number three is something I really believe in, preseason prep drill list, Okay. Um, whenever we get a schedule for the season, which I hope is sooner rather than later this year, uh, I take it and I look at the entire schedule for training camp. And then I break it up into what our runs and what our pass drills and the time allotment is. So if, we have, if, if I have 500 minutes of individual during training camp, hey, if you're 50-50, I know I got to work 250 minutes on run drills and I got to work 250 minutes on pass pro drills. And then from there, my list of drills I allocate the time that I need. It, it's a way for me to be more organized um, leading up into training camp so I don't end up just doing the same drills. I don't end up just spending all my time on double teams. Uh, I, I make sure before camp starts I have all my drills lined up and, and I know how long I need to spend on each. So it's something I really believe in, all right? All right, before we move on and, and get to some more, this is some stuff that I honestly really believe in. And, and, and if you watch uh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers offensive line play, I hope that you see these things. All right. We, we, we try to say, you know, we, we want to play the game the right way. And, and what I want and what I coach and, and what we demand from our guys and what has now turned into our room's standard. All right? It's not a rule. It's not me coaching anymore. It's just what our room standard is, is, is we want tough, physical guys who play with effort. All right, we want communicators. As you just heard, Bob Wiley said it's 80% of the game, right? We, we believe that, all right? We, we, next, we want to make sure we block the right guys. We eliminate the mental uh, missed assignments, all right? And, and what I believe is the above three give us a chance, all right? Um, we control, we control, and then we, we make the other team beat our best. We, we don't want to beat ourselves. I was a small college coach for 16 years um, in the U.S., Division II, Division III, NAIA. And what I found in my time there, most teams lose football games rather than teams really win football games. So we, we want to be our best and make the other team beat that. And if, if they're good enough to beat our best, then so be it, all right? And then last but not least, we want to be technically sound. And that, and that for us is a never-ending process, all right? When I grade the guys, what I care about is the production matters the most. Production trumps technique. So as we watch some of these gap schemes plays, you're going to see some plays in there that you're like, well, that wasn't very good, or that guy didn't do very good, or his footwork was wrong. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. That's what we have to work on. That's what we have to get better on in our individual, right? But what I care about the most is, did you do your job, and did your guy make the play, all right? Uh, I believe that you win the block on first two or three steps, all right? Everything else is effort and finish. And then after being Wiles assistant for a year and taking over and kind of finding my own way, 
what I realized is I end up coaching and teaching many of the same drills or the principles from my small college days. All right. So uh, I, I use the squares that Wiley had. Um, I, I use techniques and drills that I learned way back at the cool clinic that I've been coaching for a long time. All right. Now, Wiley said, you know, he's talking about effort and, and chasing the ball and conserving energy. Uh, honestly, guys, that's not what I believe in. I, I, I believe that we're trying to create that mentality um, of playing with effort, covering the ball, and finishing. And as I said, it's, it's becomes, it has become our room, our old line room in Winnipeg. It's become our standard. All right, so this is a preseason game. And you don't see a lot of, uh, you know, the guys in the middle started and played for us this year. Um, you know, the guys that are the tackles in this picture are no longer with us. Um, and, and these guys have been around for a couple of weeks. What, what you see in this picture is these guys aren't veterans. Those middle three guys, they're all kind of trying to figure it out. Uh, first year guy, first year in the CFL. Uh, the, the left guard is a rookie this year. Um, the center has been with us for a couple of years, but he's really, this is the first year he was a starter. And throughout training camp, our veterans, our leaders in the room, made sure these guys knew when they got to play, the effort and the standard and the physicalness that our group plays with. So if you watch this picture, right, you see the right guard trying to throw 77 out like, you know, Pat did a great job talking about twist pickup. Now that's kind of what the right guard's doing. The center, he's looking for work. So he's setting back, looking one way. He's going to find some work over there. The right tackle's knocking a guy down. But what I love, fellas, is I, I, I just watched this picture. You got all three interior guys and a tackle all running downfield, covering the football and chasing. And I want you to watch 68. He jumps over the pile. He gives 20, uh, 78, whatever this guy's number is right there, he gives him a little extra shove. He makes sure that that little DB knows that he's around that pile. He's protecting the ball carrier. All right, look at 61 here. He comes in, he grabs this guy, throws him out of the way, he picks up the ball carrier, right? It's a mentality, it's a mindset that we have of making sure those defensive guys know it's going to be a long day for them. All right. Now let's talk about some gap runs. Okay. And I'll give you my email and I can send this stuff to you at the end. All right. But you know, for us, it's a mix up from our standard zone schemes. We, we run probably two to three gap runs a day. Um, one of the reasons I'm talking about it tonight is because I, I studied it a lot this winter to try to make this play better for us because we don't run it um, as much as we do the tight zone. Um, but things that I found, it's the same as for the defense, right? We, we like the running back actions the same as inside zone schemes, okay? You've got multiple running back actions and you've got alignments, okay? It's the back side of a zone scheme and the front side of a gap scheme. For me, we teach them basically the same. So it eliminates teaching for me. I teach the right guard, I teach the left guard and the left tackle on the back side of a zone play almost exactly the same as I do on the front side of a counter or the front side of a gap play, okay? I believe it's an attitude run. It's aggressive at the point of attack. It's a downhill run, okay? Um, it's a four-minute staple for us. You'll see in one of the next slides. When, when we have to run out the clock, it's one of the staples that we go to because it's a downhill aggressive um, attitude run, okay? Pullers can attack the DN. They like the pass rush. Well, you pull and get them kicked out with a guard, get them kicked out with a tackle, all right? They don't like that. DNs like to rush the passer, all right? I think the counter play is a better matchup because um, you put the pulling guard on the defensive end. You also have the guard fullback counter. Now your backside tackle stays on the backside DN. So it's, it's a matchup game for us in that we don't always have to read the backside. We don't have to have a receiver block the backside. We let the big, strong guards do it, okay? I believe it's easy to add wrinkles. Okay. It, it also then has a defined entry point for the ball carrier. And I think that makes it a lot easier for a non-traditional ball carrier. All right. We run the counter play with our quarterback. We run the counter play with our wide receivers carrying the football. They don't do that a ton. So we try to make a clear, easy entry point for them where they don't have to feel it out like they do in the zone schemes. Okay. And then uh, the bottom two, I think, are really important as well. It's easy to add misdirection, sweep action, create eye violations on defense, or as Wiles used to always say, put them in a conflict of assignment. And then, to me, your best run action passes have pullers. All right? You, I also believe in this, guys. you got to make sure you speak the same language with your guys. Wiles was talking about it. First step, second step. 
All right, so when I get into this double team stuff and when I get into how we teach the double teams, understand that I've already talked about all this stuff with my guy. They know what first step is. They know what the stab step is. They, they know all these individual one-on-one -on -one steps, okay? So here we go. Here's one of the first things I do. This, and, and to me, this is a great drill, whether it's a zone play or a gap play, okay? What we're doing right here, guys, is we call this drill the drive with a side pusher. And I'm teaching them all those things that Wilds was talking about. Stay down, stay grounded, short's better than long, playing with demeanor, playing with power. All right, let, let's watch 51 right here. He stands up right away and look what happens. You see, he gets pushed around over his board. His steps are too long, he's too high. This drill shows him that right away. He feels it before I even have to tell him. So 51 knows he's got to correct this. All right, watch this guy over here again. All right, now he's staying nice and down, okay? His short, his steps are short. He's anchored, he's grounded. I like this guy's elbows. His elbows are down, his thumbs are up. All those things Wiles just talked about, I'm seeing in this drill. So zone and gap, these are one of the first drills that we go to, all right? Instant correction for the guys. Okay, here's the next one. Now. We take the boards away. You can use the boards if you want. We get them to understand, or we get them in this drill to think that they're the inside player of the double team. So again, this could be a deuce block, left guard, left tackle would be here. It could also be a backside B block in a zone game. I give them a feet call, they start moving their feet. Then I give them a drive or a move and then they start pushing. And at the end, what they're trying to simulate is there's a linebacker who's now come, that they have to come off to. Right? Again, they should be moving vertically, holding their line. And I'm a big believer in running the back knee through the defender. All right? So once I give them the, the move call, I want to see their back knee rip through the defender or rip through the crotch. Right? Watch 57 over here, guys. Let's watch this guy. One of the things I don't like is when I give him the move call, look what happens to his left knee. All right? You see how he's outside the frame of that guy. Now these guys have to help in the drill, right? I want them to lean in on them, but I want this knee driving right between their knees. And that's to me where the vertical movement comes in, right? So that's what you're seeing here. This is our drill progression. How we go from one guy to two guys, how we get it taught. All right, now what you're watching here, all right? These guys over here are working just the center's block back and he's working a little fold concept. Could be like a power play. If you run power, you run the quarterback power read, right? That's what he's working here. We're working the center on his block back, getting over the towel, all right? These guys over here are just working a zone concept. I'm trying to get multiple guys working at one time so there's not a lot of standing around, all right? So 61 would be the center, and it's counter to the left, and he's going to step over his towel. I want a positive first step, and then boom, here comes his second step and he's working his hips up the field, okay? We, we see a lot of guys in the CFL is once the guard pulls and the center makes his block, we see a lot of these guys try to play over the top. So this guy's gonna be strong with his left hand. He's gonna work his left hand and his left hip up the field so the defender can't fight over the top. So we're working the center block back here and then just a tight pull, all right? Now, let's, we're looking at it over here, okay? This is our backup center at the time. All right, again, towels, instant correction for me. Instant correction, watch this guy's first step. To me, positive first step, you gotta step over the towel and cover. And Wiles basically said your block back or your down block is an angle drive block, that's all it is. Watch 59, see how he steps underneath himself, he doesn't gain any ground. A Couple things may be happening, he may not have the weight correct on the inside of his right foot, all right? So he's gotta, we may have to adjust his stance a little bit, okay? So he's not getting over the towel. Now, what I like that he's doing at the end is watch this. We call this rip the ripper. It's one of those finished things we talk about. So he's blocking it, blocking it. He thinks he's going to lose it. So he rips his back arm and he rips the ripper so that guy can't get over the top. We go right back to it. I make him do it again to see if he can get his foot over the towel this time. All right, coach screwed up the cadence. All right, here we go. Now look at his second step. Much better, eh, maybe a little bit slow, sure, all those things, but much better, instant correction. 
Okay, now we get into the double team part. This is how I start it. This is the first day of double teams. I got a defender right here and I got a linebacker right here. I want them to understand what the fit feels like before we start. So I get them in the fit. I get them in the fit and then we start walking that guy back and bang, there's that one arm ricochet drill. We just saw number 60, right? We just saw that drill. Bang, that's what it is. So we start like this. When we get to the double teams, after we get the individual one-on-one -on -one stuff taught, we go to, this is how we fit the double. So we start in the fit, we walk them back, and then we finish. Okay, good, all right? Now, here's the next phase of it. This has become one of my other favorite drills. I get them in the fit, and then I get another guy similar to the drill with the side pusher, and he's trying to push on the hip of the inside guy of the double. All right, so what you got over here, this actually is a zone concept over here. This is a front side tight end and a tackle on a zone combo. So he's trying to separate the tight end from the tackle. This could be a backside guard and a, and a tackle on a counter play. It could be a backside guard and tackle. I'm sorry, a front side guard and tackle on a counter play or a backside guard and tackle on a zone game. Is 65 is pushing on the hip of this guy, trying to separate their hips, all right? You got to have your force lines working in the same direction and your lines not crossing. So what we're trying to simulate is, is this guy right here. He's the two technique is when he feels the covered guy, he's going to do what? He's going to try to throw him by and then he's going to try to pop his hips into this gap. Right. I saw Mike Anderson uh, is here watching coach. Hey, how you doing, buddy? You've been a great friend and mentor to me. You got to remember the name Chris Novich. All right. I know that. Chris Novich used to teach their D tackles what he would call the hip pop. And so this D tackle, D line coaches teach this guy right here to throw their hip and try to pop and separate the lineman. So I'm trying to simulate that with this drill and not let that happen. So again, I give him a feet call and then I want to see if this guy's running his back knee through the down guy. And again, 68's not doing great right here. All right, what we're watching, guys, is we're watching this guy's inside leg. Now, I like his right arm out of there, too, by the way. All right, but what I want to see is this left leg continuing to run and drive his left knee through that defender's crease. That's what I want to see. And I know right now 68's walking around that thing a little bit. So my coaching point to him is run the back knee through the crotch. So that's what we're trying to stimulate. It's been one of the drills that, I, that I've that i really started to enjoy, and we do it at, you know once or twice a week right now. And we're just trying to understand the fit of the double, the force lines, and making sure we stay together on our doubles, right? I hate it when we have a double team and you got six or 650 pounds of beef and you're working against each other and the defensive guy wins a two-on-one. Can't stand it, all right? And a lot of times it's because the fit isn't right and they're pushing against each other, in my opinion. All right, so that's what you see here. I got another look of it for you. Now we're going the other way, okay? I think this guy's doing pretty good. You never see, this is 61, the rookie from Windsor. You never see his feet walk around this thing. All right, now I know 67's kind of in your way, but here's 61's foot right there. Watch how that thing just keeps going vertical and he's through that defender. That's where your movement comes in, fellas. Good. All right. Now, the next phase of our double team is we fit the, we fit the covered guy and we make the uncovered guy come and fit. All right. So we're working backwards is what we're doing. Okay. We got into the fit together. We drove bank. Now we're trying to get each player there. So I start the covered guy in the fit and then I bring the uncovered guy. So if you're a tackle tight end combination team on a counter, maybe this is a uh, counter to the left, and then here comes your tackle tight end or your tackle fullback, and you're pulling a gap wider. Right? Again, what I don't like with 57 is walk. look how he's walking around this thing. His back knee is not going up and through it enough for me. Okay, So that's what we're trying to learn here is trying to how to get to the fit of the double team. Okay, so earlier I mentioned the backside tackle. You know, when we fit a double team and, and we're going to run a counter play, we either use two techniques. We use what we call a shuffle strike, okay, or we use a high knee gallop technique. So if this is the left guard, 
This is the left guard. Here comes the left tackle on a counter to the left. So we use two techniques, a shuffle strike, which we call lateral, lateral, and then vertical on their third. Okay, so we go lateral for two and vertical on the third. And what we end up getting is this guy, the left guard, his left knee is high. And when this left tackle comes in and fits, his right leg is in front. Okay, his right leg is in front and his left leg is back. And I know then we're getting hip to hip on the double team. Okay. If we don't use the shuffle strike, we use what we call the high knee gallop, where he's going to gallop into it like that. It's a little hop step basically with two feet, and he's going to get to fit the same way. In this case, the left tackle here is using a shuffle strike, lateral, boom, and then vertical. And then there's the fit I want, other than, of course, I wish his feet were a little bit further apart. All right, that's the fit I'm looking for on the deuce block right there. Okay, I want the guards in outside leg high and the tackles inside leg high. Okay, here's the next phase in the progression. The covered guy goes, we say go, one, two, good. And then here comes the other guy and then we fit the position. Okay, now this happens to be a zone play. I don't have all my clips here in North Dakota with me. So you gotta watch this as a zone play. And this was the fit we were looking for in a front side gap. But you get the idea of a double team and how we teach the progression. The covered guy goes, then the uncovered guy goes, and then next we'll start to walk it and push it. Okay. Here's the other reason I love this drill. All right. This is a this is a guard and tackle. Uh, in this picture, we're running counter to the right. That's what we did way back in 16, I told you. All right. So this is going to be the covered guy right here. Okay, this is going to be the uncovered guy. Some people would call him the postman. Some people would call him the drive man. All right, I, I use covered, uncovered, because then their footwork matches. So here comes the covered guy. One, two, good. That's what we call the settle stab. First step, second step. And then here comes the tackle on his fit. Now, watch the tackle's hands. Watch the tackle's hands. You see that? He knows his fit was wrong, and they needed to be more vertical. I love this drill because it's another drill that gives them instant correction without really me having to say anything. Because guess what? They get sick of me talking, all right? So here's one of the ways that I do it. That's the other, that's the next phase of the progression for me of the double team, all right? And then last but not least, okay, here's the full double. Here's the full double. Okay, then we get to the group. And I know I don't have a bunch of time left, Polly, but you're going to give me a few more minutes, all right? So we're going to get to the group. Now I got the tight ends and fullbacks over here with me. This is a group walkthrough period. Some days it's full speed. Some days it's walkthrough, right? It's one of the ways that we're trying to teach the guys what to do, all right? The center is going to be the block back player. These guys are your douche players, okay? And then here's your puller. And then this one we're going guard with the fullback as the second puller, okay? So you'll see what's going on. Here's the deuce block. Now, let's look at the left tackle on the deuce. He's using what we call the high knee gallop. He's high kneeing, he's galloping into the double team with his inside leg high, and that's the fit we're looking for. So the guard's outside leg is high, the tackle's inside leg is high, so we know our force lines are pushing in the same direction, okay? Now, if we watch the guard, I don't like the guard's first step, all right? Watch his first step. See how he just kind of pivots underneath himself? He ends up turning his hips. I want this guy to be more square, so really what I want him to do, especially with in, in the CFL with this guy a yard off the ball and this guy's got shorter legs, I really want his first step to take up the line of scrimmage and be right there right, more aggressive with his first step, okay? So that's what we're looking at is the deuce block there, and then you see your kick out and your second puller coming. Good, nice and clean, nice and easy. All right, next one is the same thing with the guard and the fullback. And now let's look at the difference. This time, this guy with the bag comes down nice and tight. And I'm purposely, guys, I'm purposely using the top of these letters 
as the line of scrimmage so they can watch their feet. I know if the pulling guard is crossing the line of scrimmage, that, right, as Wiles says, we don't get to paint lines on the field anymore. So I'm using any line or any apparatus that I have. So I'm using the top of the letters right there. Okay, so this is one of those scenarios that the, the DN comes down and logs himself. So the guard makes his, his contact. Again, we only log him if he logs himself. What I also like to tell him is, is I've, I've also told him this, guys, it's a non-negotiable kickout. Your helmet has to go on the inside half. And I believe if you do that correctly, if your helmet's on the inside half and this guy's coming down so hard, you're naturally just going to log your hips around. I don't want them ever playing for the log, right? And, and that's what you'll see. You'll see a couple coming up here that I think we do that. All right, now some adjustments for you. Here's the center and the fullback. So now the center is the first puller, okay? Look how tight the center is on his pull. There's no space for that defender to get in. You see the center actually was right on the guard's tail. And that's what I was talking about. You want to scrape paint off of those butts. And you know you're tight enough on that double team. Okay. Again, the tackle's high knee galloping, and it ends up being a track block philosophy. He's got the B gap. He's got the A gap. So if this guy goes out, he'll just continue to work. Okay. If this guy stays in, then the tackle will continue to work to that linebacker. All right. I got guys that ask me how we block that linebacker. To me, it depends on how they play it. If he's a fast over-the-top guy, we may you him back out and block him that direction. If he's a slow fill guy or he's a downhill guy, we're going to come and we're going to smack him right there and we're going to set the wall. All right. Or what I tell my guys, if this guy is a fill guy and he wants to fill like this, we come and dork him in the ear hole. All right. We hit him in the side of the V of the neck and knock him into next week. Now, what, what you're going to see here is we were playing around with a different pull by the center. All right, Wiles and Sharby, this is kind of what we were talking about last week on our Zoom call with uh, Scotty and Matt Jones. Right, We're trying a little bit different technique against a log player to see if we can get around it. Now, our center didn't like it. You see he turns and shakes his head to me. Okay, okay, fine. Center doesn't like it. We're going to go back to doing the way he's always done it. But – you have to understand what your players can do really well. Sometimes I'm going to make them do things they don't like. That's not the point, right? But I'm going to give them the freedom to tell me if they like this technique or if they don't like this technique or if it works for them or if it doesn't work for them, okay? All right, I got one or two more and then a couple last clips for you. Now, let's look at the right guard on this path. Again, I'm using the top of these letters. You see where the guard is pulling? And you see where his helmet is on contact, right? That's a bad path by the right guard. You see how much space is between the left tackle and the puller. Again, I want him scraping paint. I want him into the line of scrimmage on a trap course, okay? So I don't like the path by the right guard here. You can see there's too much space. Now, what I would tell the tackle is if this happens, you got to just blow this thing up and swab the, the hole out for us. All right, and work your way to the linebacker, but the D linemen are more important. Okay, so that's what you'd see here. I don't, I don't like that pull, and I don't like that hat positioning, that body positioning by the right guard. Okay, and then this is another thing you got to tell your pulling tackles, especially if they're faster guys and the guards pulling. You got to be one by one, a yard behind and a yard deeper. So sometimes you got to slow that tackle. Yeah. Yeah.